Hello, I'm Mike Driscoll, and today I'm going to give you a short tutorial on an introduction to graphing with Python and Matplotlib. Matplotlib, or Matplotlib, is uh, used for data visualizations. Primarily, you can use it to create uh, charts and graphs. Um, often, you will use Matplotlib with uh, Pandas or NumPy or other scientific libraries in the Python uh, scientific package area. Today, we will talk about creating a simple line chart with PyPlot, which is a built-in submodule of Matplotlib. We'll also look at how to create bar charts, pie charts, labels, um, titles for our, our plots. Um, we'll add a legend and also show you how to create multiple figures all at the same time. Let's get started by installing matplotlib. As usual, you can use a python 3-m pip install matplotlib. If you happen to need pandas or numpy, you could add those on the end with, with spaces. So matplotlib space numpy space pandas, and that would install all three, for example. Um, a lot of people like to use virtual environments. You're welcome to do that first. So if you wanted to do that, it'd be python 3-m uh, venv venv and then the name of the environment that you want to create. And then you just activate it, and then you could pip install all the libraries you need. So let's get started by creating a line chart. Line charts are pretty easy to create. They don't take a lot of code anyway. The first step is to import uh, the plotting part of your, your code. Import matplotlib.pyplot, which is your plotting submodule. To shorten the import up a little bit, we'll rename it plt, or plot. Then we have a function called lineplot that takes in a, a sequence of numbers. And then we just plot that number, plot.plot, plot, plot the numbers, and we'll add a label on there as well. Uh, you do dot show to show the plot to the user. And really, that's all you need to do. We can run it here in Jupyter Notebook, and you can see that it will output in Jupyter Notebook the plot. But just for a second, let's go ahead and switch over to my IDE because it looks a little bit different when you actually run it with an IDE or in your terminal. So when you run it, it's going to open it up in kind of like a tkinter interface where it has buttons on it. So if you need to like move around, you could do that too. This this particular chart, you don't really need to use the arrow keys. But we could zoom in if we wanted to. Or we could change some different preferences if you wanted to. Um, you can play around with that if you want to. Anyway, that's how, you, how it looks when you actually run it outside of Jupyter. Let's move on and talk about creating a bar chart. So a bar chart, as you know, uh, is a series of bars that show uh, how data changes over time. To create a bar chart, instead of dot line, you do dot bar. So it's pretty, it's pretty similar, but this time you're not just passing in a series of numbers. You're also going to pass in um, a series, another series of numbers for like positions, like what number should go on the on the axes, and you can tell it what color to make the bars in the bar chart. You can also tell it what uh, to do for the x ticks, which are the marks along the bottom of your graph. So we're going to use these values uh, zero through four, or zero through three, I guess, and mark those as the ticks on our on our uh, chart. And then we take in a list of labels that we'll pass in as well to put along the bottom. So when we run this, um, it's not even going to show fully on this little uh, screen. So let's zoom out a little bit. You can see it's got labels underneath it. But let's go ahead and run this one in, uh, in this code as well. So if you do that, um, I think this is the same code. If we run this, you can see much better that it shows electric, solar, diesel, and unleaded. And it's a much bigger interface than in Jupyter. Jupyter is a good way to just show off stuff, though. OK, so let's create a horizontal bar chart. Very similar to the previous bar chart that we created, except this time the bars will go um, left to right instead of to, um, bottom to top. So to create a horizontal bar chart, you just do bar h instead of dot bar. And then you can just pass the exact same information to it. So let's switch back over here. We'll stop this other one from running. And we will do our horizontal bar chart. So when you run this code, um, you will see that it goes, like I said, from left to right. 
and the labels appear on the left instead of um, along the bottom. So it just kind of shifted uh, 90 degrees, basically. All right, let's go ahead and move along and see how to create a pie chart. So again, very similar to what we were doing before, except that this time we're going to have some subplots. This just gives us a way to uh, do more with our plotting. So from the subplots, we get, grab a figure and an axis object. We tell it that we want to put a pie, create a pie chart with some numbers and labels, and then we want to show it. So let's go ahead and go to our plain pie chart. And I'll show you how to create a fancier one here in a moment. So here we go ahead and run. Looks like I have an errant breakpoint here. Let's go ahead and finish running that. And now we get a nice colorful um, pie chart. And you know, these, these, these numbers come from uh, my own head. I just made them up. But it's just kind of a fun thing to do and play around with. And you can see as you mouse around that the X and Y coordinates are telling you where your mouse is. So cool. All right, let's go on and move along to our fancier pie chart. So the fancy pie chart is going to be fancy because we're going to explode a slice out of the part out of the pie. So to do that, you just tell it what to do by giving it a tuple. Um, then in your axe.py, we can add some more uh, information. So in this case, we're going to explode um, this particular tuple out. Uh, we're going to add a shadow to true, and the start angle is 90 degrees. And I honestly don't remember what auto PCT means, but that's a part of it. Let's go ahead and try this out and see what we end up with. So as this runs, there we go. So now you can see the shadows in our in our chart that are added. Now you could add these shadows even if you didn't pop out a section of it. But it's more fun to have the shadow with with the pop out. It kind of makes it look like it's floating. Anyway, that's how you make a fancier looking pie chart. I think that's cool and really easy to do in Matplotlib. All right, so let's talk about adding labels to our charts. Again, this is pretty easy because it has an intuitive name, X label and Y label. You just set those to strings and you can give descriptions to um, what, the, what it means along the bottom of your chart and what it means along the side. So let's look at our new chart. We'll jump back over here to bar chart labels. And we'll just go ahead and run this and see what it looks like with these new labels. So now we have vehicle types, electric, solar, diesel, and unleaded, which we didn't have there before. We just had the labels for each of the bars. And now we know what these numbers here along the, along the left mean. It's the number of vehicles that were used. Before, this could have been anything. It could have been cars. It could have been buses. You could label this to be more and more specific, however you want it to be. All right. Let's add some titles to our plots. So before, we just added a an X label and a Y label. To actually add a title, you just uh, do dot .title and give it um, another string. So in this case, we're just going to say, say gas used in various vehicles. So again, the cool thing about this is that we're going to basically keep building on this example and show you how it changes the same chart. So now we should have a title along the top, gas used in various vehicles. And then of course we have our two labels and everything else that's on there. Oh, and I changed this a little bit so that we could add a double bar, uh, two different bars to it. So the second one, um, as you can see here, plot.bar, plot.bar, one is green and one is blue and you have to pass in different values. So I'm just showing you know how you, how you do multiple, uh, multiple bars in a bar chart. All right, let's go on and add a legend to our bar chart. All right, so bar chart legend. To add a legend, you just call the legend function or method and pass in um, the parts of the legend that you want, as well as the location for the legend to go in. Upper left, you know, bottom right, wherever you want that legend to appear on your chart. So if we go over here to our bar chart legend and we run this code, we should get um, our little legend. Now you just stuck it up here in the corner. You can put it wherever you want on the chart. All right. Finally, let's talk about showing multiple figures. When I, when I say multiple figures, that basically means I'm going to plot two plots in one figure, or 
two figures in one plot. I'm not sure how, how it works underneath the covers. So first we get a plot from our figure, then we plot the numbers onto, um, on there, kind of. And then we plot again, second plot, plot.figure2, we tell it to plot more numbers, and it's a lot easier just to just to like bring it up. So let's um, let's see multiple figures. You can, you can see what I'm talking about if you actually see the code. I think it's a lot easier just to have both side by side. So let's just bring this up. Okay, so now we're plot plotting figure one and figure two, and in this case, it just opens up two different plots. So there is a way to put two plots on one figure. This is how you just, if you want to plot lots of plots all at once and have multiple windows open, this is how you would do that. So you just say plot.figure, give it a number, plot.figure again, give it a different number, and you'll note that when you call plot, it plots to the fi figures implicitly, which is a little bit confusing and why I was a little bit confused myself. All right, let's let, take another example. And look at another example of multiple plots. This time we're going to use an example from the matplotlib docs. And this example uses NumPy. So if you don't have that installed, go ahead and pip install that before you run this code. Otherwise you'll get an error. So if we run this one, it's going to get some sample data using NumPy. And it's going to do some sine waves. But this time we're doing subplots, which allow us to put the plots on one figure. So here we say we want to have two subplots. We're going to give it a, a subplot title, vertically stacked subplots, and then we're going to tell it where to plot. So axis zero, which is the top one, gets plots, and axis one gets different, gets plotted with some other numbers. And so now we have two plots on one figure, or versus the, the previous example, which had two completely different figures. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to you and helps you get started using Matplotlib. Feel free to drop any questions below in the comments if you'd like to.